Hey guys, it's Patty, Rockstar Mom, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, as you see from the title, well, you probably, those of you who really do follow me know that uh, I've sort of been missing in action. And again, from the title, you can see that I've had surgery. And I have to tell you that this has been an experience. <laughs> at, at first, I just was not going to tell anybody. And uh, as a matter of fact, we, we, except for Jennifer, we did not tell our kids until the very last minute before it happened because number one, we didn't want them to worry. We didn't think it was super serious. Um, the only reason we told Jennifer was because uh, having her married to a doctor, uh, I really wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, to um, take advantage of her counsel on how I should handle this, uh, this, what was going on with me. So, but just as I've really been thinking about this over the past uh, few days, I've decided uh, that I will tell you about it. And the main reason is because I, I don't want anyone else to go through, number one, what I've been through, but number two, uh, mine has turned out on the positive side, but it could have easily have gone the other way. So I tell you, as I'm uh, putting my makeup on, I'm gonna tell you what happened and, and I will list the makeup, uh, everything that I'm using in the, below the video in the show more box. Uh, I will say that today I'm using the IT Cosmetics Celebration Foundation in medium. And I think this is just an IT flat top brush too. I don't know if it's supposed to be used with this, but I'm using it. My face. This is the second time I've had makeup on since my surgery. And as of this morning, today, it's been 11 days since surgery. And I've only worn makeup one other day. And it was the day I went for my pre-op. I know my surgeon is used to seeing people without makeup, but I'm not used to seeing people without makeup. So, I put it on for him. No, I put it on for me. But this sort of all started back in the summer. <clears throat> um, actually, I think I had maybe had mentioned it, but since we officially moved down here, I had not found a primary care physician and for a couple of different reasons actually uh, number one just got busy and we were traveling a lot and number two Hurricane Michael happened and the doctors were very much in demand so early last summer I was able to find a primary care physician who was taking new patients. They were here, they just weren't taking new patients. And so I, <clears throat> you know, I knew I needed, I needed my mammogram. I, I was just a tad overdue for my colonoscopy. You know, just needed blood work in general. And so I've got the mammogram done. And in talking with her, 
she said, you know, it's time for your colonoscopy, or a little overdue, but she said, I think truly you're a real good candidate for the Cologuard, and that is the test they can do. Um, it's not a, a colonoscopy, but it's uh, where you literally send a stool sample off to be uh, analyzed. So she said, you're a senior, you're healthy otherwise, I think you're a good candidate for this. So I jumped on it. And she ordered, well actually, nothing. I mean, it's like from that point on, it's when everything went, started going downhill big time. Because she, the doctor orders it. And she ordered it, and I didn't get it, and I didn't get it, and I didn't get it. And finally, I get a phone call from the people, the color guard people, one day. And they said they had an order. They had been trying to ship it to me, but they could not find my address anywhere in this country. And... The new doctor's office had given them, our address has a little something in it that uh, if you don't do it, then we won't get the mail. So we're always very careful when we give our address to make sure we tell people that. But anyway, I corrected that and they sent it on out to me. I get it. and I. Pick a day that's convenient to do it. Did it, sent it in. And this new doctor's office that uh, has that, one of the new systems where you can join that a group and you can see all of your medical records, all of your tests, everything online. So evident, and I had signed up for it. So I, you know, I hadn't heard back from my doctor's office that they had received anything. So I decided to go on that site and just see if maybe anything had been posted to me. And sure enough, there was the colon guard. And under results, it was positive. Let me go back because as I was preparing to do the colon guard, I was reading all the instructions and all of the material they sent with it. And one of the things they said in the material was, was that there was a high incidence of false positives with that test, to be aware of that. So sure enough, there on the results, it said positive. And I sort of took a deep breath <laughs> and immediately, I mean, really, it just came to me instantly. I, you know, oh, well, there's a lot of false positives. I had no symptoms. I'm going along, listen, I'm doing great. I'm healthy as an ox. Never had any digestive issues at all. Honestly, I didn't think anything about it. I told Jim. I had told Jim when I read, when I was reading the material about the false positives. I shared that with him when I was reading it that day. So, you know, and when I saw those results and I told him, boy, my eyes were sunken in. Do you know I've lost eight pounds? I have no appetite. I'm sure that's gonna change. I'm not getting too excited about it. But, it said, you know, said positive. I called my doctor's office. I hadn't heard from them. And they were able to get me on in within a day or so. I go in and the doctor comes in the room and 
she said, why are you here? And I said, well, I, the results from the color guard came in and she had not even read the chart outside the door, I guess. They're very computerized. The computer is sitting there, you know, in the examining room, a permanent fixture, and she, every time I would go in, she would sit there and get on it and look up my records. So she went, oh, and so she sat down and looked up my records and she sat back and said, oh my gosh, oh my goodness, I wasn't expecting this. And I said, well, neither was I, but, you know, the material said that they have a high number of false positives. So I'm choosing to think right now that that's what this is. And, I mean, she got excited really, really fast. And she said, well, I don't see them. She said, I need to refer you to a specialist. And she gave me a couple of names and <clears throat> told me who she would go to if it were her or if it were her mother. I always ask that question. Uh, and I really ask it throughout this, every single person. If this were you, what would you do? If this were you, would you see this particular person? And, or if this were your, if they were young enough to be my child, I would say if this were your mother, would you send her here? If this were your mother, would you recommend this action? She answered, yes, you know, she would definitely refer her mother. Well, I, I left her office, went out, got in my car. This was a Friday afternoon. I, call, I sat there before I even started my car, and I called the number. And I had an appointment for the following Tuesday morning. I'm thinking, I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm a false positive. I mean, I, there was something in me that kept telling me that I'm a false positive. Jim has gone through this whole thing with me and for, uh, really until that point or after that point, he's been at every appointment with me because I think, I think two pairs of ears are always better. And I have a little notebook that goes, that I started carrying with me when I went to doctors so I could document and write things down. So we go, and he says, you know, told him the whole story, told him about the false positives of the colon guard, and he says, well, that's not my experience. We need to do, you know, regular colonoscopy. We scheduled that, and I don't know, it was a week or two later, did all the prep work, went in for the colonoscopy, and before I even came out from under the whatever, uh, he had met with Jim and said that they had found a growth. And they were concerned because, number, mainly because of the location. Uh, and then wanted to wait until I was out from under to let to talk to me too. When I was able to comprehend, <clears throat> you know, didn't take that long. What was going on? Uh, he sat us down and told us that you learn a lot about the colon. So normally, they call everything they see a polyp. That's, a polyp is just sort of a generic name according to him uh, in the beginning. And normally when they do a colonoscopy and they see a polyp, they can just snip it right then and there and then they send it to pathology. But this was 
in a location where he almost didn't find it. Your, your colon is sort of like this, and I'm probably, I may have this reversed, but you got your rectum, and then you're on the opposite side of your colon, your large intestine, is where the small intestine uh, connects to the large intestine, and there's a little protrusion going down, and that little protrusion that's going down, and it's not very big, is called the cecum. And at the tail, very end of the cecum is your appendix. So this growth, and they could just barely see the top of it, was after, it was where it went down and the, the cecum sort of angles, and it was underneath in, in like a fold, and they could just barely see the top of it. And he did do a scraping to send a pathology. And he told us that day, he said, I honestly, he said, you know, let's send this off to pathology and we scheduled a date to go back in and um, get the results of that. And I don't have my notes in front of me, but now this is all by now early fall, or probably early September. And it's benign. Or, as he put it, um, as he put it, it was scraped. The very top was benign. But because they couldn't see it, um, because they couldn't see it, it might have something underneath where they could see. They didn't know how deep it went into the, I think your colon only has four layers. It, it, um, it, it, there could be something underneath that. He said, we've got a couple of options. Right off the bat, he said, you can, we can go in and do surgery and take it. Uh, that's gonna be completely up to you. He said, or, and test it and find out exactly what it is. Or we can, we can, um, there's a little procedure that can be done and there's someone here in our area who does the procedure. And what they do is they go in and they shoot a fluid up under it and it floats it and then they can snip it and they do like a colonoscopy, they do it like in a colonoscopy situation. And he told us, he, he said, I, he said, I've shown this to a couple of my colleagues and, and we really and truly think it is a lipoma. And lipomas, on further investigation and Googling are benign fibroids and they it's very unusual to have one in your colon usually I tell you what they're found internally they're the fibroids that are women who have uterine fibroids that's what they are but he was still concerned Number one, because they just couldn't see enough of it to know for sure that's what it was. And number two, you know, they didn't know. They just didn't know. Said, you know, <clears throat> if you want to do that procedure, that's that's a, a good option. And, and I said, I, so I asked the question, if this were you, would you do that under this circumstance? Or would you do surgery and just get it uh, that way. And he said, oh, I think I would do this. I would try this. He said, I can set you up with the doctor to see him that does these, or I can, I can um, just, we can just go ahead and schedule it. So I said, well, you know, 
doesn't sound like there's a lot of discussion about it. And Jim and I sort of looked at each other and decided that that's what we would do. Just go ahead and schedule it. So he scheduled it. And it was the first time he could get us in was probably two or three weeks later. And as it got closer, I started thinking about it. And I decided, and I told Jim, I, I just, I think I, I want to talk to this doctor who's going to do this before we do it. And Jim said, I, you know, Patty, I agree. So we made the appointment, went in to talk to him. Now, by the way, I had, you know, what our daughter-in-law, and she's an internist, what she said, you know, is we sent her the pictures. He had given us a picture of it, what he could. And she said, you know, Patty, I don't know, but she said, here's another option for you. She said, and I'm not going to tell you what to do because this has to be your decision. But she said, at your age, she said, at your age, you don't have to do anything. She said, you don't know how long it's been here. You don't know how fast it's growing. She said, where the location of it, it's very likely it wasn't seen. It could have been there and just not been seen when you had your last colonoscopy. She said, so it could be so slow growing or it could be so fast growing. <laughs> but, you know, that not doing anything is an option. And I asked her, okay, if it were your mother, she said, I'd probably recommend that she do something about it, one procedure or the other. And to meet this doctor, there, were, there was just a lot of hesitation on his part. And he said, I just have no guarantee. He said, I do these. He said, but I just have no guarantee that this procedure I think it was called EMI. He said, I just have no, just can't guarantee it where this is located. He said, if it's sitting on that top layer of skin, it'll be a piece of cake. He said, but if it's not, he said, I won't even try. And he said, you're, then you're still looking at surgery. He said, however, there is a doctor in Orlando who <clears throat> has had real good luck with these, the hard ones. And he said, if you wanted to go down there, I can get you in to see him. But basically he was telling us that he didn't want to do it. I said, let me think about it. I don't feel like we're in such a hurry because, you know, from all indications, this thing is benign. And, you know, it's not an urgent thing. And that by now, our, uh, our son and three-year-old granddaughter uh, were on their way here for a, their annual visit. And it looked like, and then all of our kids, everybody, kids, grandkids, were coming here for Thanksgiving. So I knew there was no way I could do anything before they got here. And... I thought, we, and we had decided not to cruise between Thanksgiving and Christmas this year. We had already made that decision. Whatever I decide to do, I'll do it between Christmas, uh, between Thanksgiving and Christmas. After I, I decided that, I, for me personally, that I wanted it out of my body. And because he said that more than likely it could be done laparoscopically. I wanted it out of my body, whether even if it was benign and totally, totally innocent, I wanted it out of my body. And again, gave me the name of a, a surgeon. He highly recommended. I asked the two questions, would you use this person? Would you send your mother to this person? An astounding yes. So we made an appointment uh, with that surgeon and then uh, and, and it literally in plenty of time to even have the surgery before Christmas, but uh, our grandson, uh, the baby, one-year-old, 
I look at it myself in the uh, camera here, and oh my gosh, makeup. Mm. Uh, I'm not used to seeing myself with makeup on. But uh, made the appointment, and then the baby was sick when he got here, just had the crud. And guess who caught the crud? The only person of everybody who was holding him and loving on him, and I was the only one who got it. So, and I got it something big time. So I finally got in to see the surgeon. Um, well, I take it back. The other doctor had told me who was going to do the uh, the EMI said that you are going to need a CT scan of your abdomen for the surgeon. So we scheduled that and I was able to get in and get that done. And then we, within a few days, we went in to see the surgeon. And by now it's seven or eight days before Christmas. And he, we're in the examining room waiting on him and he comes in and he has his little laptop, sets it down and opens it up and starts reading. And, and the other doctor had, who referred us had told us that they would just take, like, just go in and take it, just sort of pluck it laparoscopically is probably what they would do. Well, he, all of, just out of the clear blue, starts saying, he goes up and he stands in front of this chart of the abdomen, the colon, the, the large intestine, the small intestine, all the organs and pointing, and, and he is saying, you know, we'll go in and we'll take from uh, where your small intestine connects to your large intestine, we'll cut there, and then we'll go up a third of the way and take a third of your colon, and then re we'll get all that, we'll get all the lymph nodes, we'll reconnect you right there. And, and I'm going, whoa! And, and I looked over at Jim, and, and his, his body stiffened up, and it was like, what are you talking about? And I'm going, wait, wait, no. We, this is, no. This is, uh, this is not what, we were expecting and he said oh yeah yeah this is this I highly this is what you need to do I highly recommend this he said I'm pretty sure we can do it laparoscopic but he said once we get in we may have to just split you open depending on how how bad it is and and I'm I, I'm what you know, but this is this is you know this is just a little benign growth at the very end of my colon and well no but this is you know and and finally and you know Jim is speaking up now saying you know this is just not what we've been told and he had gone on to explain that it would definitely be a little lifestyle change for me that my my bathroom habits would change that that uh, how it affected people, it affected people very differently. Uh, so I'm, th you know, in my mind, I'm thinking this is crazy. I, I'm, I've gone from more than likely this is benign. You you don't have to do anything. To you're going to take a third of my colon. And it's going to be a lifestyle change for me. And I'm thinking about all the traveling we do and how in the world can I be available to go to the bathroom multiple times a day at the, at the drop of a hat, you know, always have a bathroom around me. And you can just imagine what was going on in my mind and, and Jim's too. So finally I said, you know what, uh, I think... I think there's a lack of communication here on somebody's part. I'm not sure whose, but but this has been going on for now for, you know, four or five months. And 
we're down to all of a sudden doing a surgery that to me I would think I would think would be fairly minor to something very major when you're taking a third of somebody's colon so that you can get lymph nodes. I, I would consider that sort of major and why, if it was that severe, why have I been going along like nothing was happening since the summer? And he, you know, he read his, over his notes again and he said, I just, he said, I'm wondering if I have the correct notes. And, or all of the notes. And so he said, why don't we do this? He said, why don't, I, I know your doctor, the doctor who referred me, and I know the doctor who referred him to you. He said, why don't I get with them and we try to get on a conference call and talk about it and get everybody's input on what they think and and go from there. So that's how we left there that day. And in about four or five days, it was a day or so before Christmas, he called and he said that they had finally been able to uh, conference call and talk about what was going on with me. And, and he, in fact, was right in that he did not have all the information. And that he had been led to believe that this was a lot more serious and but that they all agreed in looking at the little picture of it that they had and again it was just the top surface of it um, that it more than likely was a lipoma a benign lipoma i think all the lipomas are benign but it was a lip lipoma although they wouldn't know until pathology. And he said, here's what we, uh, we think. And he said, you still can veto this, but here's what we think. And he said, what we think is that we, should, we could do it laparoscopically and we can go in. And he said, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the growth and he said, I'll stop the procedure. He said, there's an area in the operating room where I can go and examine it. And then I'm gonna send it to pathology and for a frozen section and we'll wait right there. Uh, it won't take long. We'll wait right there for the results and then we'll proceed from there. So, and then he said, I will take as little as I can take and do the surgery right. And um, he said it, it may involve um, taking just about an inch above where your small intestine connects to your large intestine. So uh, he said that the recovery will be basically the same. And he said, and I doubt seriously that it's going to affect your lifestyle once you're healed. We, uh, ag I agreed to that, and we scheduled uh, a surgery date for the 7th of January. And so they went in, and, 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 this, and he had explained too that this is not the very same laparoscopic surgery that they do for other small things like a gallbladder. He said with gallbladder they may just the puncture, the three puncture wounds around the area and then they do the little incision, but the little incision for a gallbladder is small because it's so small that he said any part of your colon is bigger and they have to have a bigger incision. So I think my incision is about like that. Maybe not quite that big, maybe about like that. And uh, with the three puncture wounds, I mean my belly looks like you can't imagine, still bruised. But uh, the surgery went great. It was about a three, three and a half hour surgery. And, you know, having to wait for the pathology report. And it was a lipoma. It was benign through and through and through. 
but uh, he decided that that he would he took he took the sedum, which again is like about the, that big, and you can imagine that thing was tucked up in there, that big, and then he he cut you know, the small intestine from the large intestine and went up about another inch and reconnected me right there. So all told, he said he only took about that much of my colon. And he, he said he just felt like with his experience that that was, you know, that was what should be done and under the circumstances. And we left it up to him at that point. We told him, you know, that to do what he I said, you do what you do for your mom and for her lifestyle. And from the minute we walked through the doors of that hospital until we left, the experience was just perfect. The only I have since I was in the hospital for two full days, and I still don't have my voice back from the tube they put down my throat. It just sort my voice just sort of comes and goes. Um, I. He told me part of the discharge instructions were that I could, you know, try to walk some, not to lift anything over 15 pounds, not to drive. I can't take a bath. You know, guys, I'm a bath person. I take a couple of showers a week, but I am a bath pers person. I, I love to sit and soak in the bath, and I, oh, I don't even know. It's probably going to be another couple of weeks before I can take a bath, but I've had no energy. We came from the home from the hospital late afternoon on Thursday, and I laid around pretty much. I would either lay in bed or I would get up and sit in my chair. Well, I had to. Uh, I couldn't sit in my chair because Biscuit wanted to be with me. We boarded Biscuit while I had this surgery. But so I started sitting on the end of the couch so he could sit beside me and I would put one of the throw pillows in my lap because I knew I couldn't let him accidentally <clears throat> jump in my lap. I was so sore and every move hurt. That first day I just really sat around and then the next day I told Jim I wanted to get out and walk just a little bit. It was the weather was gorgeous here. So I walked, of course he walked with me, with me holding on to him, and we didn't take Biscuit because we didn't want to take any chances on, on uh, him tripping me up, getting around my feet. He walked, if you walk completely around the, the road, uh, it's a loop inside our little gate, gated community. It's a quarter of a mile, and, and there are alleyways cutting across it, so that first walk, I did about a fourth uh, around. And then later that day, I wanted to go out and we did another fourth. And then the next day, we upped it to a half. And I just kept in walking twice a day and increasing it. Uh, finally, I'm walking by myself. We went back to, for my follow-up a few days ago and he released me to do anything I want to do except lift more than 15 pounds, and I can't take a bath. Um, I go back in a month, but he says I'm doing great. I have no appetite. As I said, I've lost eight pounds, but that's strictly because I haven't been eating. Um, you know, it, something my daughter-in-law said when we were first discussing this back in the early summer was, you know, you don't have to do anything. She said, what if, Patty, she said, think about the what if. She said, what if you don't do anything and it turns out to be bad? It's going to shorten your lifestyle. It's going to shorten your life more than likely. Uh, but she said, what if it's bad, well, if it's bad and it's spread? What if, if it's bad but it hasn't spread, it's localized? Then you have different options. And she said, 
if, if you do anything. If you if you don't do anything, you're never going to know until it's too late. But if you do, if you go ahead and do something uh, to find out what this is for sure, your options are it's already spread and you deal with it. Uh, it's localized and you deal with it. But it's benign, totally. And you have you have you had surgery for nothing? It's just a chance you. You, you, you have to make the decision. Well, I made that decision, and that's one of the first things I thought about was, you know, I, I, the worst thing that happened was I had surgery for nothing. The best thing that came out of it is I have, I have peace of mind about it. I, I'm glad I made this choice for me. Jim would not make it at all. He wouldn't even discuss it. He said it had to be my decision what I wanted to do. Um, and so now that it's over, I, I, I'm glad I did it. I, would I do it again? Yes, I would do it again. Uh, I absolutely would let that surgeon cut off my left arm or my right arm. I just, I, I liked him that much once once we were on the same page, uh, I liked him that much. Uh, I go back to the colon guard, you know, talk, and, and he, I even went back on their website, and even on their website, they, I think they, use, they say they have a 13% false positive that they know of. 13% false positive rate. To me, that's a lot. That's a lot. Um, but I'm glad I did it. I'm glad it's over. I'm glad that I'm getting my strength back. Um, he, he told me that if I feel confident in my reaction time for driving, um, that I can drive when I feel like I'm ready. Uh, he already, he, we told him about my walking, uh, and, you know, he said, just don't, I can't pick Biscuit up. Uh, now, Biscuit does not weigh 15 pounds, but he's dead weight, and when I've even tried to move him a little bit, he's, he's more than I want to take a chance on. So I just, when I'm sitting down, I'm sitting on the end of my sofa, as I said, and I have a pillow in my lap, and usually my computer on top of my pillow. But I am doing fine. And the reason I wanted to tell you all of this is it's sort of like we talk about breast cancer all the time and how we, we want to make sure that we get our mammograms. But Getting your colonoscopy is so important. It is so important. I, I, you know, would I do the colon guard again? Well, luckily, I probably will never, I will never have to do anything again, mainly because of my age. Uh, had this been uh, a po true positive, uh, my story would be totally different, you know, and for, as far as what my, uh, what I'm gonna have to do for the rest of my life to, watch this, be on top of this, but probably will never have to have another colonoscopy. Um, so I'm thankful for that. Some good things come from old age. But I, just do it. Just do it. Uh, oh, and we did tell our kids, our other kids, we told them a, a few days before I had the surgery. Uh, we told everybody what was going on, and we just didn't want to ruin their holidays. We didn't want to ruin their Christmas. We didn't want to, if I could have not told Jennifer, I wouldn't have told Jennifer until the end, too. Uh, there was not anything they could do about it. Uh, we asked that not anyone come, although we gave Jennifer the option, because she is my daughter, 
uh, of coming, but we had boarded Biscuit, and we really needed no help with anything, and God forbid it had been anything bad, Jennifer could have been down here in no time. So, you know, we left that decision up to her, and she was, you know, Jim was in touch with her constantly, so, so, I was, we were real comfortable with that. The line is, yes, I've had the surgery. Yes, I'm doing great. I think I am doing great. Um, uh, you know, some friends. Oh, and you know what? Here's the deal, too. After we came home from the surgeon's office that first day, and he said he wanted to take a third of my colon, I shared this with my neighbor, my upstairs neighbor. Now, I've known her for the last two or three years that she's lived here. And she's probably very close to my age, and I knew she had had some health issues, but but I didn't know for sure what over the years or many years ago. And when I shared with this, that with her, she said, "Well, Patty, I don't even have a colon." She said, my, "They had to remove my whole colon," and she said, "I live with it." And then, as I was walking one day after that, a few days later, a girl that I walk with, who again is real close to my age, a lady. Uh, I said something to her about it, and she said, oh, well, I, over, I had to have over half of my colon removed, and, you know, she said, you, you just, you figure out, you learn real quick how to deal with it, and, um, and then I was talking to another neighbor and said something, and she said, well, I've had over half of mine, so there was three people that live in this little tiny complex where we live just right off the bat who had had a similar type surgery and I would have never known it never would have known it so you never know but again you do what's right for you but if you're overdue for your colonoscopy do it I, I highly recommend that you do it. It's a um, pretty, pretty good peace of mind, I would say. Pretty good peace of mind. So with that, I didn't mean for this video to be so long. I finished the getting my makeup on quite a while ago, but wanted to tell you what was going on with me. It's the first of the year. Jim has booked us a cruise, a small seven-day Caribbean cruise the end of February. So I have something to look forward to. Um, we love those Caribbean cruises. We just love them. And so we're going to do that. So I'm back. I'm back. Uh, and I'm, I'm very happy to be back. I'm very happy that I'm healthy. And it's a great way to start the new year. A really good way to start the new year. So thank you so much for watching. Know that I love you. Know that more than anything, I hope that you will take care of yourselves, be kind to yourselves. When you're kind to yourself, it's so much easier to be kind to other people. I'll see you soon.